Hey guys, this is uh, Shaman from Ludovox. So we are at Essen. This is day four, the last day. Everybody's been a bit tired. We still have some some appointments, and but <laughs> we're trying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's very good. And we just met Eric Martin, and that is quite an honor. We started to have a, some kind of off discussion. Uh, I really like what he told me about the, the game that are trending that he that he tested on the on the show. So we'd like to ask him. So, yeah. what did you like? What what game did you like? Yes, the thing that caught me the most. Played six times in 15 minutes. Yeah. Oh. Flying kiwis. Okay. Yes, a very silly game from Hoch, uh, where you are shooting little bird disc into a grid. That is all. Make a square, or when if no one makes a square, you claim the stacks and you stack up all the tokens, because of course you cover other people's and take their kiwis and stack them all up. Biggest stack wins. It's super simple and silly, but... You enjoyed it on the show, but did you, did you take a box to, uh, to bring back home? No. My, my bags are quite full already with other things. Problem of overweight on the... <laughs> so, I mean, by comparison, uh, Crazy Coconuts, I like that better. Just a little bit more, but yeah. I really love a coconut. I'm playing with my, uh, you know, five years old uh, daughter. I have a six-year-old, and it's the same thing. It's perfect for them. Uh, did you have the, the, the chance, the opportunity to test some bigger games? Here, uh, I played two games. Uh, one from Liberlud, uh coming out the Dice Forge, where it's a dice building game. Uh, coming out sometime in 2016, and of course there's been Rattle Bones, another example of this. It's it's interesting. This is a little more, little more gamey perhaps, and also a game by Chris Bouliger, uh from Ludicali, yeah. and uh, Four Gods. It's a real. Oh, oh, the, that's a prototype, right? Yes, a real time world building tile laying, land grabbing game. I, I met him uh, outside, you know, when uh, looking for after the, the Wurst, uh, curry Wurst uh, sandwich. <laughs> and he told me that it was some real-time uh, game. And it is a puzzle game type or something? It's sort of puzzle. Uh, you're laying out landscape tiles. And, of course, you must match the landscape as you're building it. But at some point during the game, you're going to uh, become a god and claim ownership. And now you have little profits that you can start laying on the land and claiming different spaces and try to grab the appropriate land. You must convert everyone to you, to, to your beliefs, uh, while grabbing landscape as well. And did you, because we are in front of... Played it twice already as well. It's, it's, okay. it's very nice. And you know that there are some games that are trending on, the, on the, you know, the geek list of the people on Board Game Geek. I heard a lot about uh, Dice City. Uh, I don't remember what, what, what else they were, but did you have a chance to at least have a look or you, you did some interview? For Dice City in particular? Uh, I'm, I'm just mentioning this one because I heard the name a lot. All right. I mean, the, the trending on Board Game Geek here is Seven Wonders Duel. No, no surprise. Uh, 504, code names, Mysterium, uh, I forget five time stories. So along those lines, uh, I've played all of them so far. They're all, all very good. Oh, I, I see some uh, some French name. I mean, some uh, French designer in there with the, so. Okay, we're having uh, some uh, Amer some people from everywhere coming to Germany to talk about French games. <laughs> oh, I mean that's, that that's what Gen Con is. Uh, lots of time, of course. Asmodee has come on; they claim more land every year, clawing it away from other publishers. That's scary. No, it's not. <laughs> Did it's not it's not scary. Oh, I'm kidding. Did you see some? Uh, you know that some people made some uh, some fake maps of the the essential. Uh, the one by Tony Bordell, perhaps. I don't know the name, but I saw one that was very funny. Where you know there was uh, a fake, they put fake name on every booth, but with some reference. So I remember the, it was a big square in the middle, and it was it was written Asmodi uh, uh, World Domination Control Tower. That would be Tony Bordell, Boydell, uh from Surprise Stare. Yes, there was also, I believe, a uh, there was a cheese eating contest at some point, and there was lots of different things here. The booth, uh, don't go there, you know. Lots of others. So, okay, so thank you very much. What, what do you enjoy the most when you're coming in that kind of show? To this kind of show? Uh, mostly seeing people that I know. Yeah, it's this. I've played lots of games. I've played no games here, almost. Uh, so it's more seeing what's coming. I get advance of what's talk, talk about next year. I try to stay ahead. This is old news. This is all done. I'm done with this show. So we must look to the future and see what's coming.
Some people told me that uh, they saw you at the, at Tokyo in Tokyo for the Tokyo Game Market as well. I was in Tokyo Game Market in May. I'm going back in November, and uh, it, it's been fascinating. I, the environment is very different. It's a very different feel. Amateur publishers uh, putting out very small print runs of their games, and they'll do a few hundred copies, and they're done. I do the next game. I do the next game, and it's the, the creative enterprise and spirit that's we don't. I, not familiar with elsewhere. It sort of goes back to old school, uh, Friedemann, Frieza self-publishing his own game, just a few hundred copies, or Richard Breeze, or someone like that. But this is large scale with a hundred designers doing it. Okay, so uh, just one last thing is, uh, where, you, where are you at with, uh, with the new uh, design and uh, everything about the new board game geek? I heard about that because Aldi told us about that and we'd like to know because yes. it's quite exciting. We've been having beta tests of the game page redesign, uh, simultaneously redesigned for mobile to make it actually usable on the, the phone easily. Uh, the plan, as I understand it, is currently to have that go live before BGGCon, which takes place in mid middle of November. After that, I believe we're doing the front page, but I'm not sure. We'll see. I mean, everything is... It's a lot of information to try to manage at once, and not everyone will be happy with how things come out, but ideally it's all there. It is there for the people who want it. They can find everything that they need, and new people can... Uh, it would be more welcoming uh, okay. to them. Thank you very much, Eric. That was a pleasure to meet you and have this uh, short in interview. Thank you very much. See you guys on Ludavax and on Born Game Week. <laughs>